Some of you know that I have proven that racism does not exist, that it has never existed. It is an illusion that's been made up by the children of the lie. And in my, rec- my last book, The Antidote, Heal an American from the Poison of Hate, Blame, and Victimhood. I highly recommend it for everybody and their mama. I prove in the ant- antidote that racism does not exist. I give you perfect examples. And some of you know that our battle is a spir- spiritual battle. It's a warfare between good and evil, right versus wrong. We got a, uh, I have a good, good friend here this morning who I think disagrees with me on racism, that racism does exist. I have with me David Capellian, and I want to say up front, David is a really good friend. I, I know his family. I've known David for a long time. Uh, WorldNet Daily published two of my books, even my last one, The Antidote, Healing America from the Poison of Hate, Blame, and Victimhood. David is the vice president and managing editor of WorldNet Daily and author of The Snapping of the American Mind, healing a nation broken by a lawless government and godless culture. David, good morning, sir. Jesse, my friend, how are you? <laughs> All is well. It's an honor to have you here. It's an honor to be here. You know, when I was thinking about this discussion that you and I are going to have about racism, I'm like, wow, David is such a good friend. I've known him for a long time. I know his family. And am I going to go hard on David or will I be soft? I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> am I going to be hard on Jesse or not? <laughs> oh, so David, um, you just, do you disagree with me that racism, I say it does not as if you say that it does. I'll tell you what, Jesse. The, I've preparing for this interview. <laughs> I've been thinking about it and uh, reading your <laughs> columns, listening to your your talks about it. And you know, I'm mostly there with you because it is a fraud. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I agree with you entirely. Uh, our problem as fallen beings is is hatred and pride. Yes, sir. And rebellion against God and racism is mostly a fraud because, you know, racism is like feeling superior to another race and hating and discriminating against them, all that kind of thing. And if somebody says, dude, you guys had slavery, okay? (laughs) That seems like a sign of racism to where the Christian America, remember Jesse, this was a Christian nation, okay? And they somehow, all those good Christian whites had to justify slavery within their worldview, their Christian worldview. They had to do something with it. They had to have some way of saying that this is an inferior race, or we had to pick up these guys from Africa and bring them here so they could find Jesus, or they had to have some way of justifying uh, keeping people in uh, in you know, in this unwilling servitude, uncompensated servitude. So I'm not going to quibble if you, here's what I'm getting to. If somebody wants to say, man, if if anything is racism, that's racism. Okay. But I I just, my little opening monologue here is Hannity might say, okay, (laughs) here's how I see it. However you want to define racism, whatever you would call racism, Whatever I would, maybe Adolf Hitler was a racist. Let's say Hitler was a racist. Well, what I see it as this we've got 330 million people in this country. Okay, it's a lot of people. We've got to have at least one genuine racist that you would agree is a racist, one Hitler type, or 10, or 100 in, in that many people. But that does not make the nation a racist nation. Okay, to ha- you can, you're always going to find. I mean, we have people who don't know which bathroom to go to. You're always going to have people that that think something completely crazy. So however Jesse Peterson defines racism, I guarantee there are one or two or 10 or 20 of them in America. But it doesn't make America a racist nation. You know, slavery is not a good 
example is not a way to prove that racism exists. And the reason for that is that white people didn't just get up one day and decided at the breakfast table, you know what, honey, I think I'll just walk over there to Africa, get me a few black people and turn them into slaves. slaves. In Africa at one time, black on black, uh, you know, kings and people of authority, they use other black people as money whenever they wanted to buy something or whatever they want to make a trade. They would sell, you know, their uh, slaves or whatever you want to call them, their slave to the, uh, the person or, or king that they wanted to buy a product from. Uh, and so most people, would, when people would say, well, that's not slavery. Blacks were enslaved by other uh, slave owners in Africa. That's not slavery. So what happened is the, the keys, the higher up us, the authority figures, they sold blacks to the Arabs and others. And as a result, the Arabs sold them to other parts of the country. And even in this country, um, there were blacks who owned slaves. It was about economics in this country, not about the color. It was about position. It was about power. Kind of the way the government tried to do us now, enslave us mentally. And so it wasn't about the color of the person or people at all, even during slavery here. And so they used the KKK. When the KKK first started to attack black people, it was about them starting up the Republican Party and they were growing in power. They had congressmen and black, you know, senators and things like that, along with whites who helped started the party. And so the KKK went after them because of the growing power. Uh, the KKK were Democrats, blacks were Republican. And you made the point for me in that in our fallen state, falling away from God, Satan become and his demons become our influence. And he influenced us to tell us by telling us that, oh, they hate you because of your color. They this because of that. They hate you because of this. Really, they are in a fallen state and they are, pri they are prideful and they are judging you to make themselves feel better. It has nothing to do with color at all. It's a spiritual thing. I, I agree completely with that, uh, Jesse. And, you know, you mentioned about the economic reasons for slavery. Yes. Because they have these big plantations and, like, we didn't have the machinery to go and pick the cotton or tobacco or whatever. So they had to have human labor. And it's the only way that they could make that work. They, they justified it. Yes. In the U.S. and in Britain and elsewhere, they justified it. Even when they saw, yeah, it's really not right, but what else are we going to do? Okay. But if I can just make a point, we do the same thing today, okay, when people say we got to tear down these statues of Jefferson and so forth because they had slaves. We have the same thinking today with abortion. Yes. Okay? The re we have a class of people that we refuse to see as human beings with rights. Same as they did with the blacks during slavery because there is not so much an economic motivation, but there is a, um, we, we, we have embraced sexual freedom where we have as a society, kind of a post-Christian society said, I can have sex with whoever I want, whenever <laughs> I want, yeah. wherever I want, and that's my right, and shut up. Okay, that, that is the attitude of our culture today. And if that's the attitude, then you have to have abortion. It doesn't matter how horrible abortion is. You're ripping little human babies with feelings apart from limb to limb and sucking their brains out, all that stuff. It doesn't matter. There is a necessity, just like the economic necessity quote unquote, it wasn't really necessary, but they, that's how they justified slavery. And I'm just saying this because people on the left today that say, you know, America is an evil nation because it had slavery and we got to tear down all the statues and tear down all the history those statues represent because we had slavery. We're doing the same damn thing today, only arguably worse because we are killing 3,000 little babies every day, yeah. 3,000 every day. Yeah. It's the same number as died on 9-11 because of the same type of thinking as allowed slavery back then. According to the scriptures, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spirits and principalities and wickedness and evil in high places. 
And if we understand that the battles between good and evil, all battles are spiritual, is either right or wrong, then we can overcome these things. But if we believe that they are physical, because the children of the lie tells us that they are physical, we're never going to overcome them. We gave black people a black president, white people thinking that it's going to make their life, make them realize, well, white people are really not against blacks. But instead, things got worse because you cannot solve a physical problem, a spiritual problem with the physical means. I'm talking to my good friend, David Compellian, vice president and managing editor of World Net Daily. Uh, he's the author of The Sna Snapping of the American Mind, Healing a Nation Broken by a Lawless Government and Godless Culture. And um, I'm telling you, folks, I've known David over 20 years. I know his family. I know World Net Daily. You're not going to find a more decent person and people as we're in that daily. And uh, David, I tell the folks how to get your book. I see it sitting right behind you there. Tell them how to get it. Uh, they can get it at Amazon. Uh, if they want to get a signed copy, they can go to World Net Daily. You know, a good, a good place to go, um, Jesse, my first book, which is like the best known is The Marketing of Evil. Yes. And they can go to themarketingofevil.com marketingofevil.com and that is a page that has all my books and there's audiobooks versions of them and ebooks and they can see it all there and read about it and uh, that's a good place to get them and i highly recommend folks everybody and their mama uh get copies of this book and give some to your friends david you spoke of abortion in the beginning of abortion uh margaret singer she started this whole thing as he wanted to sterilize black people, and especially the South, because she saw them as unworthy, unfit people. And um, so it started out with that. But today it is about economics for Planned Parenthood and those who are pushing abortion. 70% of abortion mills are located in the inner cities. They're killing babies, the unborn child, like 90 going north, and they're making a profit like I've never seen before for, from taking lives. But what they do, they lie to women and tell them that it's your body, your choice. And pride for women who are in that fallen state, they fall for that lie. And they start to say, you know what, as you were saying, I want to have sex anytime I want to. I, I don't want to have a baby. So they pop a pill. They do all those things. But for Planned Parenthood, it's about money, not about what is right. Yeah, Jesse, I, I, you know, we're, we're talking about one evil after the other, and it, it maybe maybe we just like pull up and go to thirty thousand feet for a second, okay, <laughs> and look at like the, you know, it's almost like the left who has given us all of this stuff in America, abortion, yeah. and so forth, uh, and all of the you, you mentioned Obama and how the racial tensions have just exploded since he was in office, just the opposite of what we were promised. Yes. He's going to be, you know, a post-racial president and all that. I, I think sometimes that the left is almost camouflaged because it's so it's so dark what's going on. You have basically a, a, you have a worldview that has captured people. Well, how do I explain this? The, the people that are for Bernie Sanders, the, the college students, the people who don't know anything, they're just, they're just seduced or they're, they're seduced into free sex and so they have an abortion. They are caught up in the evil of this world, okay? But I'm not condemning them. I was a stupid kid Me once, too. too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I I never even talk on the air about the things that I got into when I was in my teens. But I mean, I was a I was a dumb kid, and I got I got seduced by all that. And but we grow out of it. A lot of people grow out of it, and a lot of the people today will grow out of it and repent of their sins and become good good people. Yes. But the thing is that those who are in power, who really know that Republicans and Christians are not all racists and bigots and homophobes, okay? It is so dark what they do. We're talking about a group of people that literally want to change America. They, they have the greatest, and by the way, the least racist nation in all of history. <laughs> and they want to 
They yeah. want to transform it. They want to change the Constitution. They want to change the culture. They, and, and the way they do this is by seducing people into supporting them and putting them in power, yeah. political power, where they can change things. That's right. And the way they do that is they addict people to hatred. Yes. We hear a lot about opioid addiction and all this stuff, which is horrible today. But I tell you, the left is addicting people and you talk a lot about black people and how they are a really a, a, a really damaged minority group. They've fallen prey so badly. They've fallen so hard to this, this addiction. There is something addicting about being a victim, a fake victim. Yes. Okay? Victimhood makes you feel righteous. Anger makes you feel alive and right and powerful, <laughs> and you're none of those things. That's right. You're, you're just a loser, and you're worse than you were before. But the left <laughs> does this, and it is so wicked. So, it's, I mean, it is so dark what they do to addict people, not just blacks, but 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 everybody, everybody. You know, into being into being victims, and that's what and that plays right into what we're seeing now with the. Um, the whole crazy NFL thing, the stupid where you football have all players. these entitled millionaire athletes, okay, that are that are complaining about, you know, basically about police brutality. This is racism, but it's police brutality, okay? Police who who earn on average, you know, fifty five thousand dollars a year, and these players are earning two point four four million dollars a year. Yeah. that's a forty four to one ratio. One of these guys, NFL players, <laughs> that's acting like aggrieved, you know, victims, they are earning 44 yeah. times what one of these cops is earning. And it's the same point I was making before. You have about 750,000 cops in this country, sworn law enforcement officers, three quarters of a million. Are there one or two racists among them? Yeah, I'm sure there are. There, but, but it doesn't mean that law enforcement is racist. <coughs> and so me. it's it's just it's wicked what is going on. So David, to, to blame be, law enforcement because we run out of time. We got to close this out. Um, yeah. The children on the left, the liberals, the liberal media, they are doing what they are supposed to do. Their father is the great deceiver, and so they are they are supposed to lie and deceive and destroy and conquer. So they are doing what they are supposed to do. That's the beauty of it. <coughs> just me. On our side, children of the truth, we're supposed to denounce that, destroy that with the truth. We're not supposed to go along with the same language that they use to destroy. But I hear Christians, I hear men and women who believe in God using the word racism as though it exists rather than saying no is right or wrong, is spiritual. And if we use the right language against the lie, then these people can't win. Why don't we do what we're supposed to do representing truth? I agree with you, Jesse. It's mostly a fake issue. Yeah. It, 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 the problem is, is hate. Racism, quote unquote, is one little slice of that type of hatred. The real problem is, is hatred. And as you say, the, the, the fallen nature, the pride, the hatred, the judgment, the judging our fellow man. Yes. We are meant to love God and love our neighbor. And then you wouldn't have racism or any of the other garbage that the left is using to really to enslave people and to destroy the greatest country on earth. That's right. David, so is there racism? Is there racism? Yeah. I'll tell you what, if there ever was, there is not anymore. <laughs>